Hey everyone, I just picked up this thermocouple vacuum gauge on eBay and I uh, thought I'd take it apart and show you how it works. So the idea is that you connect this box up to one or two of these and this is a thermocouple vacuum gauge which I'll talk about in a minute. And right now I have it, another one of these connected into this manifold and then the manifold is connected to this digital gauge. So I'll switch the pump on and then hopefully the digital gauge will match the, uh, this old analog one. So as you can see, it pumps down pretty quick because there's not much volume here. There's, there's no vacuum chamber, it's just, just the hose. I suspect that the rubber in this blue hose here is actually responsible for most of the pressure. Um, as you can see, it's sort of close. The gauge, the analog gauge is reading maybe 500 and uh, the digital gauge is reading 620 or 610, but I haven't quite finished calibrating this or setting it up, but it's, the thermocouple gauges are not really known for high accuracy. And it's also entirely possible that the pressure at the digital gauge is in fact slightly higher because it's behind this blue hose. Okay, let me show you how this thing works. The vacuum sensor itself is a four-wire device, and two of the wires are connected to a heater, which is inside this envelope, and you connect this envelope to your vacuum system. And then on the heater itself, there's a thermocouple, which is a two-wire device, so there's four total. And the idea here is that you run a specified current through the heater circuit. In this case, it's something like 165 milliamps, and the resistance of the heater is about an ohm and a half. And if the, if the vessel here is full of air, the heater will be cooled down by all of the uh, conduction, mostly, in the air. But if you suck all the air out of this, the heater has no way to lose uh, energy except for radiation, which you know comes right off the filament, and conduction through the wire leads. And inside there, this structure is actually very tiny, so the amount of uh, heat loss through conduction is quite low. So when you pull all the air out of here, this thing gets quite hot, and the thermocouple will respond with about um, 10 to 15 millivolts of, of, uh, of, of voltage there. But when this thing is full of air, the air does such a good job of conducting heat away from the heater, the thermocouple is putting out barely a millivolt, maybe like you know half a millivolt or something like that. So they're not particularly accurate vacuum gauges. What they're good for is telling you if you're uh, able to turn on your high vacuum device. So after your mechanical pump is done doing most of its work, you'll be in the range that this can measure, and uh, then you can turn on your high vacuum pump. What's neat about this circuit is how amazingly simple it can actually be. If you were to design something like this with modern electronics, you know, you'd use a constant current source and a couple of op amps and maybe a you know, microcontroller to run the whole show, but this box is actually very, very simple. It's really just a power source that's unregulated with a variable resistor to control how much current goes through the heater, and the thermocouple input is connected right up to the, to the meter here. So right now I have it connected just to this uh, thermocouple laying on the gauge, and it's not even plugged in right now. And if I heat up the thermocouple a little bit, you can see the gauge is starting to come up. So the interesting thing about thermocouples is that they're very low impedance output. So even though the signal is only uh, you know, 0 to 10 millivolts in this case, uh, there's enough drive current to actually push the meter up all by itself. And if I cool this uh, back down, you can see the meter starting to come back down. So uh, let's open this up and, and we'll take a look at what's inside. It's fun to take apart electronics that are this old because the style of doing things was so different back then. They've got this um, ganged up a knob here and the, the back selector, this one actually switches 110 volt AC to the entire circuit. And believe it or not, this red wire here, it's unplugged right now by the way, this red wire here is actually carrying live current uh, and when you turn the switch on, it passes the current to here, which energizes the transformer. So the amount of safety distance between this grounded post, which goes right to the front panel in this hot lead, is just ridiculously small. Uh, but in any case, when you finally get the thing on and don't electrocute yourself, the AC current from the transformer flows directly through this pot and then out the side of the unit to power up the heaters in the, in the vacuum sensors. Um, the return path is through this 30 ohm resistor. So the 6.5 volt source plus this pot and the 30 ohm resistor pretty much set how much current is actually going to flow through the heaters. Um, really, curiously, someone has been in here before and they wired 
both this this device has two ports here because it's meant to be able to handle two sensors and the front panel has a knob to select which sensor you want. However, strangely, someone wired the two heaters in parallel. So, I don't really see how that was ever going to work. Maybe that's why that someone threw this meter out. But obviously, if you put the two heaters in parallel, the, the, the current flow through, through them is not going to be correct. So I imagine when this device was originally set up, it came with like a bypass plug. There aren't enough positions on this knob for it to uh, switch the current to both sensors. They, it has to flow through both for this to work. The return path is dead simple. The, the other two sections of this knob just switch the, um, the return from the thermocouple directly into that analog meter. That's why it works with, with the power even switched off. The designers of this circuit knew that you would have to have some way of setting the actual current because it, it is unregulated in fact. So you'd have to have some way of checking it and then adjusting it. So the rest of this circuit, which I've drawn here, is just a, um, it, all it is is a voltmeter, really. And they're just measuring the voltmeter, or the voltage across this 30 ohm resistor. And they included a diode and a capacitor so that um, you could actually read the value on that meter. Since they're feeding AC current through the uh, sensor heaters, they had to rectify it and smooth it out with a cap so that you could actually read the value on that meter, which, which needs to have a DC uh, value. The meter itself has an impedance or at least a DC resistance of about 26 ohms. So I, you know, kind of quickly went through the numbers and everything seems to check out. Okay, hope that was interesting. See you next time. Bye.